What's up guys, it's Isaac from okiko.org. Today I'm going to be showing you how to complete the square. This is a beginner topic that's usually very confusing because it's thought as just a formula. But today I'm going to show you how to exactly use it, where it comes from, how you can use it, and more importantly, when and where you should apply it. So let's talk about number one, what is completing the square? Well, it is just the process of turning an expression like that on screen. That is called a quadratic expression because you see the x with an x of power of 2 and it turns into an expression that looks like this you notice how there is an x with something else there the plus 3 inside the bracket and the bracket is the thing that's being squared in the while you're going to see plenty of these expressions i'm just going to write down a few that i can think of so for example 3x squared plus 6x minus 5 you know, x squared plus 4x minus 7, uh, 5x squared minus x plus 10. All sorts of expressions like these, which we call quadratics, you can imply completing the square to pretty much for any one of them. You're just turning this expression into an expression where you have that bracket and the bracket is the thing that's being squared instead of the x this is going to be useful for various reasons which we'll talk about later but for now let's go to number two which is where does it come from so to complete the square you have a formula here's the formula as you can see and i just want to emphasize this idea again completing the square is about turning this expression with x squared and something with x you can see there into an expression where there's only one x over here and it's the bracket that's being squared, not just the x itself. Now I'm gonna go ahead and play a short clip of me explaining where this formula comes from. So please try to focus in on actually understanding this because when you understand it, it's gonna help you use this formula a lot more confidently and you'll get it correct uh, more often than not if you know where it comes from. Completing the square is a process to change a quadratic expression like this into that. Consider this shape made up of a square with sides of length x and a rectangle with a width of a and a length of x. The area of this shape is the area of the square x times itself plus the area of the rectangle a times x. We can split the rectangle into two and place one of them to the side of the square. Because of this, the width of each rectangle is now a over 2. The new shape form is almost a big square with sides of length x plus a over 2. To complete the square, we have to add this small square here with sides of length a over 2. The new area of the red and blue shapes can be described by the area of the bigger square x plus a over 2 times itself minus the area of the smaller square a over 2 times itself. This is how we change the previous expression for the area into this new form which is called completed form. Moving on to number three, we're going to talk about how to use the formula. I'm going to show you some examples live here. Now, just like the video you saw earlier, we're going to use the same formula from there, the completing the square formula, and we're going to try it with some quadratic expressions that you may see out in the wild. Let's take a look at question number one here. So the most important thing when you complete the square is you need to identify what is A. A is always going to be the number next to X. So in this case, that's going to be the 10 right over here. When we complete the square, we'll write an equal sign and we'll say that this is equal to bracket X plus. You see the formula says A over 2. We're going to write 10 over 2. And we're going to complete, just close the bracket and then put a square or a power of 2 on top of it. After that, we write minus bracket a over 2. In our case, again, this is 10 over 2. And then you square it. Keep in mind that we are only doing this to transform the x squared plus 10x. This expression still has the minus 3, so we'll need to copy that back and put it right here. Once you have this, you can continue to simplify until you have your final version. So that will look something like this. 10 divided by 2 is actually a 5, so we'll have x plus 5 inside the squared bracket. And then minus 10 over 2 squared. This is like saying minus 5 squared. So 5 squared is actually 25. And then for the final step, you can just take 25 minus 3 on the outside there that's minus 28 so the answer for this is x plus 5 squared minus 28 
Let's go ahead and try question number two here. I've gone ahead and just changed it slightly from what it used to be because the example was a bit too similar. So in this case, again, just identify the number that is A. The number next to X in this case is this positive 4. So when we complete the square, we'll write an equal sign and we'll open up a bracket. Inside, we should have X plus A over 2. So in this case, that is X plus 4 over 2. Don't forget after that to put the square on the top of the bracket, just like that. After that, we'll have to minus bracket a over 2. Again, a is 4, so this is 4 over 2. And then again, we have the power of 2, or the square. Again, this is only for x squared plus 4x. So the minus 4 that we have here at the back, go ahead and transfer it to the back here. The next step is to simplify. So inside this bracket, we have x plus 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then outside here, we have negative 4 over 2 squared. 4 over 2 is 2. And when I square that 2, it's 2 times itself. 2 times 2 is 4. So we'll have minus 4 for that whole thing. And then we have that minus 4 from the back as well. So we can just go one more line over here. No worries there. And minus 4 minus 4 gives you a minus 8. That's going to be the complete answer for question 2. So with these two examples, that is the basic idea of how you use the completing square formula. Now we're going to try some examples that are a bit more advanced as well. I just want to give you a full coverage here. So take a look at question number 5. Now with this example, you have a 2 in front of the x square. What's important to know is that you cannot use the completing square formula unless you are only using it when you have x square. If you have a negative x square, if you have a, you know, 3x square, if you have a negative 5x square, really anything in front of x square, you need to do something about it before you can start completing the square. So in this case, what we will do is actually factorize the 2 that is over here first. How do we do that? Factorizing is just a division. So I'm dividing out 2 from the entire expression. You can write a square bracket that looks like this. So I'm trying to take 2x squared and divide 2 out of it. I will be left with x squared inside. And you can continue down the entire expression. 20x divided by 2 gives me a positive 10x. And then the 30 that you see here divided by 2 gives you 15. Once you factorize 2 out of the entire expression, you'll notice inside there, you can finally start completing the square. That's what this is all about. So let's go ahead and use the formula again one more time, guys. A is going to be 10. So we'll rewrite this as bracket x plus 10 over 2 squared because it's x plus a over 2. So x plus 10 over 2 squared. And then we'll minus a over 2 squared. In this case, minus 10 over 2 squared. And don't forget, we did that for x squared plus 10x. So the 15 should still stay behind there. And after we write the 15, don't forget to bracket it up. Because we're doing all of this contained inside that square brackets that we had. Once you have that, you can try to simplify the rest of it. So I would probably simplify what's inside the brackets first x plus 10 over 2 is x plus 5 because 10 divided by 2 is 5 so x plus 5 squared minus 10 over 2 squared is minus 5 squared giving me a negative 25 plus 15 inside there and then we can continue on here and you can take as many lines as you need guys if you feel a bit faster uh, go ahead and skip a line or two if not please make sure to write down an extra line because it takes a few extra seconds prevents you from making a callous mistake minus 25 plus 15 here is negative 10 and once you get to this point it's also really important to know you have one more step to do here we have done the simplification, but you still have the 2 that is divided or factorized out at the beginning. So now you're going to times the 2 back into the square brackets. To times 2 with the x plus 5 squared, you can actually stick them back to back like this. You don't have to write out anything. All right, You just write the 2 and stick it next to it. And for the 2 multiplied by negative 10, that's negative 20. 
So your completed square should look like this at the end of the day. This is what happens when you have some number or something in front of x squared. You have to factorize it first. So that's going to be example number three. Let's look at the final example for here. We have 2x squared plus 9x plus 1. What happens when the numbers are a bit weird, right? We still have to factorize this too because we can't complete the square unless we have just x squared on its own. So I will have to factorize too whether we like it or not. I'm going to divide 2 out first. And here's where we just have to be careful. 2x squared divided by 2 gives me an x squared. But here I have 9x divided by 2 for the next term. What happens when the numbers are not so friendly? Well, you can write everything as a fraction. This gives you a bit of practice on fractions as well, because you're going to need it for admins. So 9x, if I divide it by 2, this is how I would write it. You should write it as positive 9 over 2x. You notice how I'm just taking the raw number of 9 itself and I'm dividing it by 2. You don't even have to write anything fancy like a decimal. You can just write 9 with a fraction line and then write the 2 after that. Now, if I have the 1 here and I factorize 2, 1 divide 2, unsurprisingly, is just 1 over 2. Moving on to the next line, we can finally start completing the square because we have x squared inside here. So again, we'll use our formula. The value for a in this question is 9 over 2. So you have to be very careful here, guys. And especially with the 9s, it can look very similar to a. So just go very, very slow here. I'm going to open up the square bracket. And inside the bracket, I should have x plus a over 2. We'll write x plus, and just be careful here again, a is 9 over 2. When I take 9 over 2 and I divide it with 2 again, because a over 2, so 9 over 2 over 2, that should give me 9 over 4. You have to be super careful here. If you want, you can write it out to the side. I'll just write it at the top here. 9 over 2, if I divide it by 2 again, that's going to be 9 divided by 4. It's because you're dividing the two twos together. I'm going to put a square on top of it and we'll continue minus a over 2 squared is going to be the same thing so minus bracket a over 2 as we discussed is 9 over 4 don't forget to square that as well and you have the 1 over 2 at the back so don't forget him once you have all of that go ahead and wrap it up in a nice bracket like so then you can bring this and you can try to simplify so with fractions it may take a bit longer but again just take it slow and it should be fine in this case, I'm going to continue. Let's see. I'm going to write this out. Minus 9 over 4 squared. Okay, when you square fractions, square the top and square the bottom. So minus 9 squared is 81. And 4 squared is 16. So negative 81 over 16 plus 1 over 2. For the next part, I'm going to just write everything back. But I'm going to simplify the negative 81 plus 6, uh, sorry, the negative 81 over 16 plus 1 over 2. Now, in this case, if you have a calculator, because the numbers are a bit complex, feel free to put it into a calculator. That's what I'm going to do here. And we get negative 73 over 16. If you don't have access to a calculator during this, uh, during this paper, then please go ahead and work it out off to the side, preferably so you don't have to write out this whole line again. You can just work out the fraction negative 81 over 16 plus 1 over 2. Once you have this negative 73 over 16 here, you can go ahead and times out the 2 that you factorized at the start into the rest of the bracket. Again, timesing it with the square bracket, you can just stick it side by side. So 2 times x plus 9 over 4 squared. And then 2 times negative 73 over 16 is negative 73 over 8. So that's what this final answer should look like. So this is how you use completing the square formula with these four examples. Even when you have unfriendly numbers, even when you have to factorize, the formula still remains the same. You just need to know where to apply it.
with that being said let's move on to number four which is why should you care or more importantly how to apply completing the square where can i use it number one you can use it to solve quadratic equations quadratic equations are the ones like you see there this one is taken directly from a passive paper now, a common question that students are going to ask is, why can't I just use factorization or quadratic formula? The answer is that there is this word hence. For some questions, you will have to use your answer from a completed square, maybe a part A of the question or part one that tells you to complete the square. And maybe the second part of that question would tell you to use that answer. So that's why we've immediately turned x squared plus 6x in this into its completed square form and for some questions this is mandatory so you won't be able to use factorization you won't be able to use quadratic formula moving on to application number two it's going to be finding the turning point on a quadratic curve usually if you have a quadratic equation you can't know what the turning or stationary point of it is unless you do completing the square so that's really important for when you sketch the graph because sketching those quadratic graphs uh, are usually three or four mark questions and this is going to be really important for you to sketch the graph properly if you don't know where the turning point is then you won't be able to draw the graph most likely as you can see here me circling this part this is how you get the turning point or rather the coordinates of the turning point from the completed square form for the x value you take the thing inside the bracket and set it as equal to zero then that gives you your x coordinate for the y coordinate you actually take the number that's directly outside the squared bracket so whether it's a plus 5 or plus 10 or minus 10, that's going to be the y coordinate of the turning point. So that is pretty much everything you need to know about completing the square. In the description, I've left a link to a paper that you can try out along with answers to completing the square questions. If you find content like this useful, please go ahead and share it around. It helps me a lot. And subscribe if you want to see more tutorials like this. I've been Isaac from okiko.org. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.